Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to start with our weather. Yeah, kind of misty at times outside, but we could be in for a little rain on your way to work tomorrow. Adam. Yeah, absolutely. Back to work, back to school in the morning, and you want the umbrella and have the windshield wipers ready to go in the car because we've got some areas of rain developing right now. Not much on authority radar. This is all very, very light in nature, and actually some of it is beneath the radar beam. All that drizzle and the drizzly dampness that we have in place, but these little patches of green that you see moving south to north, those are just small little sprinkles embedded within the thick clouds and the drizzle. I mean, take a look at our time lapse. Now, this is elevated on top of a building, but it still really is a good representation of what's been going on tonight. It's still very damp despite not seeing much on the radar for the reasons that I gave you before. Very light and, of course, beneath the radar beam. That's going to change some areas of light rain coming and going and becoming widespread overnight. That's going to last through the morning commute tomorrow and then notice by tomorrow afternoon the rain comes to an end. Those rain chances really, really fall off quickly after the noon hour tomorrow. However, we could have some thunderstorms in some parts of our area. I'll break that down for you where we could have severe storms, the primary threats from those and of course how much rain we could get. See you in a bit. Thank you, Adam. No regard for human life. That's how San Antonio police describe this 19 year old in custody on multiple charges, including capital murder. And as the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, police think that he's responsible for two deadly shootings within the past 18 months. Handcuffed and walked to a police unit. 19 year old Nathan Martinez was arrested on warrants of capital murder, murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. But San Antonio police say that's on top of four other felony warrants of possession of a firearm and a controlled substance. We are ex uh, very relieved to get this individual who's obviously has um, no regard for human life off the streets. Officer Washington Moscoso explains Martinez's capital murder charges stem from a 2022 shooting at a Father's Day barbecue in the 2500 block of Patron Drive, where two people were killed and five others were hurt. The charges for murder and aggravated assault are connected to an August 2023 drive-by shooting on the 2800 block of Moss Circle. As for police say, Martinez shot a 17-year-old boy and his 56-year-old mother as they were drinking coffee under their carport. The teenager died, but his mother survived along with the family dog, who was also hurt. A lot of bragging on social media, a lot of very specific things that he was saying on his social media accounts uh, that was, were able to link him to the shooting on Moss Circle, with the rival gang, the, uh, the use of the switch. He referred to his, his handgun that was used. Moscoso adds ballistic evidence found at multiple scenes match Martinez's description of his gun and the modifications he says he made, making a semi-automatic pistol a machine pistol or fully automatic. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Another news tonight, the self-proclaimed girlfriend of the Rob Elementary School shooter is in federal custody tonight. 19-year-old Victoria Gabriela Rodriguez Morales is accused of making threats against the Uvalde community for years. She was arrested in Puerto Rico on a charge of making threats using interstate communications. Court records detail years of alleged threats made against schools in Uvalde, Texas, A&M University, and law enforcement. Rodriguez Morales is also accused of making claims on social media that she had told former Uvalde CISD police chief Pete Arredondo that the attack was going to happen before it did. Now, these are the exact quotes believed to be from her Instagram accounts with her spelling and grammar. And on May 22nd of this year, law enforcement officials believe that she wrote, quote, Pete didn't listen to me, and I told him I was going to send someone to shoot their school only at Uvalde, but he said, quote, yeah, come and prove it, end quote. Now, the next month, on June 14th, she allegedly wrote direct messages with another Instagram account claiming that she's going to kill everyone at Uvalde High School and, quote, the new elementary that they're building, end quote. Now, case that investigates is a full breakdown of the court records and the efforts that investigators say that they've made to get those threats to stop. You can read them right now on KSAT.com. A man Bear County deputy say caused that deadly crash on Highway 16 earlier this week. Now behind bars. This is 40 year old Larry Chorus. He's facing two counts of manslaughter in the deaths of 64 year old Linda Perry and her 40 year old daughter Julie. Sheriff Javier Salazar says they wanted to wait a few days to make the arrest because investigators 
had to download and review data from the suspect's car computer. Salazar says that data showed Chorus was going 116 miles per hour at the time of the crash. The sheriff calling this incident especially tragic because Chorus's wife died in a similar crash on that same stretch of road back in March. One could make the argument that Mr. Chorus absolutely should have known better uh, having lost a loved one. The car Chorus was driving also had cameras. Deputies are still working to download that video to learn more about this crash. Now an update to our breaking story that we brought to you last night. We're learning more tonight about the suspect who was involved in a shooting with San Antonio police officers. So this here is an older mugshot of 47 year old David Trevino. Last night, police say that they pulled Trevino over on the frontage road along I-35 in Somerset. Now we're told that Trevino had a passenger in the car, got out, ran into an open field. Police say that while he was running away, Trevino pointed a gun at the officers and fired. Six officers had been chasing the suspects and were told that they returned fire and hit Trevino several times. Trevino was taken to the hospital and at last check, he was in critical condition. By the way, the three other passengers in the vehicle, they were detained. None of the officers were, was hurt. It is unclear, though, how many of those six officers who we told you were involved in the chase shot Trevino, but they're going to be on administrative duty, which is protocol. Just this week, two men charged in a 2017 murder had their cases dismissed by the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Those are recent examples, but Bear County Judicial Management reports show the DA dismissed more than 6,000 cases in just the first three months of this year. That same data shows the current DA's office has doubled the amount of case dismissals since the previous administration of Nico LaHood. The complete breakdown of this case dismissal data is available. Just click on the story on our website, ksat.com. Neighbors are coming together to help a family who lost their home in an awful accident. So we want to show you the scene around 7 o'clock last night. That was at a home on Ferris Creek, not far from Braun Road and Loop 1604. That's where crews say that a fire broke out. After listening to this, a vehicle crashed into a home's water heater. A woman inside got hurt. The house was totally destroyed. The people who live in that neighborhood are now eager to help pretty much any way they can. I know... There's been offers um, to put him up in an Airbnb owned by a neighbor uh, for as long as he needs. They just walked out with the clothes on their back. So someone put his size out there. So I'm sure he's going to have clothes bought for him today. And tonight, the woman who was injured in that fire is recovering in the hospital. A nightclub at the center of dozens of police calls has closed its doors. Our cameras found a note on the door today at Pravat Martini Bar and Social Club on UTSA Boulevard. It says the locks have been changed after the tenants violated the lease agreement for failing to pay rent. We told you about Pravat and the calls to police after a deadly shooting in its parking lot back in May. San Antonio police said the shooting was the result of a fight that started inside the club. At the time, we asked San Antonio police about the history with Pravat. Based on the documents given to us by police officers were called to this club at least 45 times within the seven months before the shooting. Those calls included shootings, assaults, fights, and disturbances. Right now it's unclear if a state law that would ban books based on their sexual content is actually going to stand. We've told you about House Bill 900. Governor Greg Abbott signed it into law back in June. It requires that booksellers rate their books based on whether they depict or reference sex. That rating would determine whether the books would be used in public schools. The problem is some people say that law is just too vague. The courts have to decide whether it violates free speech. So in the meantime, that law is not being enforced. And now let's go to your night beat news flash. Hamas releasing 16 additional hostages back to Israel in exchange for 30 Palestinian prisoners. That was just before the ceasefire expired today. Now, among the Israelis that were released was a 49-year-old American-Israeli dual citizen. Hamas also released a pair of Russian-Israeli citizens and four Thai citizens to the Red Cross, which, by the way, was not part of the framework agreement. 145 hostages are still believed to be with Hamas. 
After three days of services, former First Lady Rosalind Carter was laid to rest today. Her family had a private funeral for her at the church that she attended in Plains, Georgia. And you can actually see her burial plot from the front porch of where the home that she shared with her husband, former President Jimmy Carter. Rosalind Carter was 96 years old. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. And news tonight out of Connecticut where Henry Kissinger has died. He's known as the Secretary of State who dominated foreign policy under Presidents Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. During that time, the U.S. extricated itself out of Vietnam and broke down barriers with China. Today, his name is among the 20th century's commanding figures in U.S. foreign policy. Henry Kissinger was 100 years old. Switching gears now, we are inviting you to join us for a special town hall that we're going to have tomorrow. It's about fertility and pregnancy loss. Many of you have sent us questions. Thank you so much for that because you're keeping that conversation going. A fertility doctor and a therapist will be here to answer your questions. And this is open. This is for anybody who has suffered from infertility, pregnancy loss, or even if you have a family member or a friend and you want to know how to help. This is really a safe space for us to have a conversation about topics that aren't usually discussed so openly, but we're going to change that. So join us again for Don't Suffer in Silence. It's going to air live tomorrow at 7 p.m. on our website and YouTube page. You can also catch it afterwards on all of our streaming platforms. Hiring the labor shortages has been one of the top challenges for our restaurant industry. It is a vital part of the San Antonio economy, the hospitality industry. They need a final boost for a strong end of the year, the hiring challenges they're facing, and how a local restaurant is getting innovative to try to keep their doors open. Let's talk money. Raise your hand if you're looking to make extra money this holiday. Well, we checked. According to LinkedIn, there aren't as many job openings at, as, uh, at major retailers this year. Yeah, however, the hospitality industry always looking for reliable help. The night team's Patty Santos shows us the changes. We're in hospitality. If you don't care, you really shouldn't be in this business. <laughs> Restaurant owner Christina Zhao takes pride in vetting job applicants that are a right fit for her team. We want people to be on our team so we can keep growing. We always have projects and endeavors that we're working on. And, and you know, I love working with people that are really smart. She says the labor shortage has forced her to find ways to improve the workflow for her staff, trim her menu, and build longevity for the business. You're always trying to grow. I mean, the, the, the mission of the business is to grow, to be able to offer more opportunities, to provide for more people. They've become very innovative in having these brunch specials and, and you know, specialty drinks, specialty meals, uh, these prefix meals for the holidays. Don Larias with the Texas Restaurant Association says hiring is up since last year, but the industry is still hurting. When you have the holidays coming up, you definitely want to have a fully uh, staffed restaurant. Lario says if you're not looking for a job, the next best way to support local restaurants this holiday is by eating out. Would you rather be at home cooking or would you rather be at a restaurant where you're getting full service? You know, where you have someone waiting on you, practically hand and foot. You don't have to wash dishes. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. That is a big plus. <laughs> Not having to clean up after your cooking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Look I'm looking at that. Yeah, there's some mist there some dampness and apparently we're going to have be dealing with the same thing tomorrow during our morning commute. The question is at what what time are we talking about Adam? Well all night tonight all morning tomorrow up through about lunchtime and then it's going to start tapering off. So let's get to our headlines. Yes the soggy morning commute have the umbrella ready for the kids at the bus stop and even when it's not raising raining you're going to have some drizzle. Then we clear on out by Thursday evening. So the evening commute not as problematic when it comes to issues associated with rain. Pleasant and comfortable thereafter. A nice stretch of weather, a nice stretch of days on the way. You know, you may be looking at your case at weather authority app and looking at the radar thinking well, it, I don't see anything, but it's so wet outside. It's because a lot of this is beneath the radar beam and what is out there actually that's detectable is extremely light. So authority radar does show some of these very bright green areas. Those are the very light showers. We're talking sprinkles for the most part. You pause it here and on the west side near Almo Ranch, Taft High School, Northwest Vista. 
You see just a little sprinkle there, but there's plenty of drizzle in between these light showers, and that's going to be the case through the rest of the night and the first part of the day tomorrow. Here's the big picture. We've got the clouds and moisture streaming in from the south. We also have this dip or disturbance in the upper level flow that's moving into Arizona. That's going to give us a little extra energy east of town and especially in East Texas later tomorrow morning into the midday kick starting some thunderstorms. So let's get right to the future cast. This is the latest update and I think it does a great job just visualizing what to expect and keep in mind in between the showers through the night and tomorrow we will still have plenty of drizzle road spray from the vehicles in front of you. You'll need your windshield wipers no matter what. And also notice east of San Antonio some thunderstorms popping up. That's where we'll have better dynamics in our atmosphere to help kickstart some of the thunderstorms. That's mainly from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. That thunderstorm potential east of San Antonio. And keep in mind with this system and all the energy, the bulk of the rain and the good rain that we could really use around here is going to be East Texas, Louisiana. They could use it as well up into Arkansas. That's where the majority of it's going to be for us. Not really much of a drought denter, but they could see three, four inches of rain in parts of Louisiana and far East Texas. But I also want to touch on the severe thunderstorm risk. There is that potential, as I mentioned, east of San Antonio. Basically, the closer you are to Houston, the higher your risk is for a brief severe thunderstorm tomorrow. And that does include Gonzales, Seguin, Cuero, Yorktown, Nixon, Smiley, Victoria, Goliad, Hallettsville, just to name a few. Primary threat, actually brief little tornadoes, brief weak tornadoes, just like what we saw uh, several weeks ago here in town, and then some gusty strong winds. Again, that's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Overall rainfall accumulations, I wish I had better news locally. San Antonio, Bear County, surrounding counties, around a quarter of an inch. Like I said, not really a drought denter, not much for the aquifer, but better than nothing, especially as we get into a dry stretch of days after this little episode of rain. I do want to point out also, east of San Antonio, where we'll have some of those thunderstorms popping up, around an inch of rain possible within the downpours. Can't rule that out. Whenever you have thunderstorms and downpours, you can easily pick up a quick inch or two of rain. So here's a look at the KSAT 12-hour forecast. Widespread, off and on rain and persistent drizzle through the morning. Notice by noon, rain chances drop to 30%. So we really cut back on the rain, and most of it's near Houston at noon. 65 at noon. Then some clearing for the evening commute. Just in time for sun Sunset, we'll see the clouds break up, which can sometimes make for picturesque and colorful sunsets. So watch for that near 70 for the high temperature tomorrow. That's 70 in San Antonio, 68 Comfort in Kerrville, 74 Pleasanton in Floresville and 72 in Seguin. Then a very beautiful stretch of weather. I mean, we're talking mornings near 50 and afternoons in the 70s Friday through the weekend even into next week. So you don't need your air conditioner. You probably don't even need your heater as well. Save on some energy bills. Oh, economical Thank weather. You. No Open wonder you've got a little right? spring in your step. Thank you. That's right. Little fall spring in his step mm -hmm. there. All right. So this is the point of the year where these kids and these teams have come so far. It's state title or bust. Absolutely. And for Blanco, they're facing a team they haven't had any success with the last couple of seasons. You know, sometimes you just run into that team. You just can't get by them for the Blanco Panthers. That is Edna. So Blanco, you know, wants to seek some revenge. Plus, in college football, Trey Moore is the best defender in the AAC. Coming up. The Blanco football team is hoping third time's a charm this postseason as the Panthers prepare to face a familiar foe, Edna, in the Class 3A D1 Regional Final. The Panthers suffered a season-ending loss to Edna in last year's regional semis and in the second round the year before, but this year has a different feel. Blanco's second-year head coach, Jamie Dixon, knows Edna, having previously coached in their district and his Panthers, have two shutouts on their resume this postseason. Last year it was more defensively. Our offense wasn't... Offense wasn't there, our defense was winning us the games, and this year, <clears throat> I mean, we won 34-0 last week, so 
we're scoring some points and our defense is, is that we're not giving up much. I really feel like our O-line is holding us together and the fact of we're able to control the line of scrimmage is way more than we were last year and it's just uh, giving our uh, quarterback time to read and our backs time to find the hole. This senior group, um, they've lost to Edna twice, you know, or two years in a row in the playoffs and stuff. and. They don't want to make it a third time, you know, and so they want to get over that and, you know, and beat this team and move to the next round. Blanco's chance for revenge against Edna is Friday at 7 o'clock from Bastrop Memorial Stadium. We were also at the Davenport Wolves practice this morning. The historic season for this young program continues after the Wolves beat Lavernia 45-31 this past week. Before the Wolves take on the Port Lavaca Calhoun Sand Crabs in the 4A D1 Regional Final, they told us how excited they are for the moment in front of them as well as the offense they're about to face. Their biggest thing is let's run the triple option and just we have to be disciplined every single play and their biggest thing is just getting you bored or getting you behind and playing safety. They try to like get you to fall asleep back there and throw a pass over top. So that's that's a big thing. Just stay alive every play. Stay ready for everything, you know. Our defense, you know, they just our scout team gives them a good look all throughout the week and our defense stays disciplined, trust the coaches and that's how they get it done. You know, our kids have had a great week of practice. You know, our, our JV guys gave them a great look. It's, it's hard that they never done the triple option all year, but um, they did a great job for us on the, on the scout um, for, for preparing our defense to, to get ready for that triple option. The Wolves and Sand Crabs will face off Friday night at 7 at the Alamo Dome. It's time to chew them up with the Fall City Beavers. Yesterday we stopped by practice with the Batlin Beavers. We're getting ready for the Chilton Pirates in the Class 2A D2 Regional Final. The Beavers senior class will they want to leave the program on a high note. Coming off our, our sophomore year, we went to state, and last year we had a heartbreaking loss against Granger in the third round, and we just knew what we needed to do uh, this summer to get here, and we did what we needed to do, and now we're going to play. Oh man, it's been really special, and you know, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Um, you know, it's been real rewarding to come out here with uh, these my team this last year and be able to go this far. You know, one round further than we did last year in the playoffs, and hopefully we can can continue to keep on going. It's been great. This group of kids, they just work hard and they play super hard, and I think we just get better every week. And you know, I think that was the case once we've gotten the playoffs. Every round we've gone, uh, we've gotten we've sort of taken a step each week, and I think that's why we're still playing. Falls City and Chilton will play Friday night at 7 at Shelton Stadium in Buda. So this week we previewed all seven greater San Antonio area teams still in the UIL playoffs. That's Blanco, Davenport, Fall City, Poth, Steel, Smithson Valley, and Piper, plus Holy Cross, who's playing for the TAPS D3 state title. You can catch those previews at BigGameCoverage.com. UTSA linebacker Trey Moore was named the American Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Moore, a redshirt sophomore from Smithson Valley High School, has 45 total tackles this season with 30 solo stops, 17 and a half tackles for loss, and a school record 14 sacks. And Moore is one of five roadrunners to make the AAC All-First Team, joining Frank Harris, Joshua Cephas, Cam Alexander, and Rashad Wisdom. 16 roadrunners placed on all conference teams, which you can find on the sports page at KSAT. Com. Micah Parsons is in awe of Deron Bland after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys cornerback Deron Bland set an NFL record on Thanksgiving with his fifth pick six of the season. And now he's joining the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year, along with Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons and other NFL greats like Miles Garrett and T.J. Watt. There's a lot of greatness on this team. And when you get to witness greatness and things that haven't been done before, and that, that I think that kind of triumphs any type of personal or um, small goals you have in mind because this is stuff that's never been done before. So right now I'm amazed about DB, and I'm kind of all DB right now. You know. We'll see if DB has any magic in him tomorrow night when the Cowboys host the Seahawks. Can you imagine if he did it again? Oh, man. at t Stadium is going to go crazy. It'd be crazy. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. We'll be right back. I want to point this out tomorrow. It's actually going to be muggy. You'll feel one day of humidity, and that is Thursday. And then it's all swept away again. 58 in the morning with the rain, soggy. Then by the afternoon, 70 for the high, and the rain's out of here by 3, 4 p.m. And then a sunny and dry stretch, but pleasant. Near 50 in the morning, it's comfortable afternoons. All right. Have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.